Hey, this is Garrett Fry. I'm a matte painter in the film industry, and uh, hopefully this will be the first of several um, videos that I create. It's kind of featuring different techniques of, of how matte paintings are created. Um, this one I'm talking about multiple projections in Nuke and how I created this column. Um, this video I created on YouTube uh, a while ago and I wanted to create a follow-up video kind of showing how I created um, this uh, this column and kind of giving you an overview of, of how a matte painter would go about uh, doing something like this. Um, and I think between this video and if you go on my website to gfryart.com and you can download the working files um, to this uh, this column, the Maya files and also the Nuke files and the images that uh, I used to create this uh, this map painting. Um, I think between this video and having the working files and being able to dig into those that you'll probably get a pretty good grasp of, of, uh, of how to do this. Um, so before I get into that kind of overview look um, I kind of want to walk you through this video um, of this breakdown and I apologize the playback is probably not going to be that great but um, this video this is the final rendered image sequence of the column and that is all matte painting. This is the projection geo that I used. Um, and this here is um, basically this is uh, each of the projections is tinted a different color just to show where the projections are and what the coverage of each projection is. And this is the spec pass that I created from a rendered image sequence I created from Maya. Um, that I comped on top of the rendered matte painting of the column. So um, I created this column uh, matte painting for several reasons. Uh, I chose this subject of the column. Uh, that is, um, for one, it's not a background. It's not a vista of, of um, and it's not static. It's a moving camera. So. Uh, when I talk to people that are kind of coming into the industry, learning more about matte painting, or even when I'm talking to people that have been in the film industry for a while, I, there's this kind of misconception about what matte painting is, what it's capable of, um, and there's this idea that uh, it's just it's just static, it's just for static shots, just flat 2D things, um, and um, and it's really not. It's it's much more than that. I mean, it is vistas and landscapes, but that's just one of the many things that matte painting is able to do. And so I think this column kind of shows it's a it's a foreground object. It um, if you play it through, you can see that there's parallaxing happening between objects um, between this blue column and this white. Uh, engaged column there's some parallaxing going on but then also there's parallaxing going on within the object within the fluting of the column and so um, so there's a lot of parallaxing going on and um, because it's being projected onto geometry it's it's kind of stereo ready and that's some that's that's two of the thing two of the major things that I hear you know even when I'm in like dailies meetings I hear people say oh well we can't use matte painting for this because it, the camera is moving or we can't use matte painting for this because it's a stereo it's a stereo shot or it's a stereo shell and um, in both those cases it's it's not true so um, um, so now that I've shown you uh, just the breakdown, uh, I can kind of go into uh, some of how I created this. So now this is some of the reference photography that I created. Um, so you can see that it actually follows the camera move, and that's on purpose. Uh, and you'll, and that just makes the job easier. Uh, for setting up your projections if you take really good photos. Um, and so if I were to 
take one of these photos and take it into Maya. Um, I can take this photo and put it on the image plane of the camera. So I do that by going to image plane uh, and import image right here. And um, I can assign that image into the image plane. So what I would do from here is I would create basic geometry and I would go through and I would try to match the perspective. And it's a little bit tricky to do, but uh, it's manageable. Um, you try to match this image, which is attached to the camera, to some basic geometry. And then once you have the perspective feeling right, and it's not going to be exact, so don't like try to kill yourself about getting it to match quite yet. Just get it to basically match, and then model the geo uh, based on this image, and model it up. Um, so you look at this right here. This is the result of, of what I modeled based on this image. So now what I can do is I can render this. And this will be my base for the map painting. This, this geometry will be my guide. Um, so I take this image and open it in Photoshop here. And that's what this image is here. And, and this is my guide. Now my photo needs to match this geometry exactly. So and it's pretty close already because I based the image, I based the model off the image. So now what I do is I bring this image back in to the Photoshop file and lay it on top of my model and try to match this thing as exact as I can. Um, in order to do that you're probably going to have to be chopping this thing up. So you'll take off sections here and you'll manipulate it uh, to match the geo exactly. Um, and once you've done that for the whole image and it's really sticking on that model really nicely, um, then you're going to have an, a projection image that you can take into Nuke. So you'll take this image and you'll take the camera from Maya that you used to create this render into Nuke. So um, so this is the image that I that came out of Photoshop. This is the camera that came out of Maya, and this is the model that came out of Maya. So now it's all living in in Nuke together. So if I were to show you what this looks like in 3D, um, this is this is it right here. So you can see. Um, that we've got one projection camera, the model, and the image that's being projected onto this model. So, um, so and it looks it looks really great from right here. But then, as soon as you start getting around here, you're gonna see where that projection is gonna break. So right here, you're gonna see some doubling and some smearing. Uh, and it's going to look really ugly. So uh, this is the OpenGL view. So if you wanted to look at it um, um, from the shot camera, let me just copy this shot camera over here. Then what what you would see would be uh, through this guy here. So you would start seeing some pretty ugly, some pretty ugly smearing, and that's just the one projection. So what 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 you need to do is you need to start creating other cameras based on the camera move that will patch up and and make this whole column look nice from every angle that the camera looks at it. So if I've got the camera here. I want to create a projection camera there, one there, and one there looking up. And so I've already 
I've already done that along the camera path and that's an important thing to do is to create projection cameras along the camera path uh, uh, because matte painting is only concerned about what you see they're not concerned about what you don't see that's outside of the camera plane so I've gone and I've created projection 1 projection 2 projection 3 and projection 4 so if I look through projection 2 here this is what I'm gonna see <clears throat> so now if I'm gonna start patching this area what I need to do is I need to render out an image of this and bring it into Photoshop and start patching this up with a photo um, so if I look through camera 2 So now I am looking at the first projection through the second projection camera. So, and I've got a write note here, so I will write that out. So I will take this and I will take the Maya file or the Maya model, render it with the same camera. So in my Photoshop file, I'll have this image and I'll have the model that is out of Maya so that is as reference and then I will lay a photo on top of this and if you look at this guy that's what this is and it has a uh, excuse me it has an alpha channel so I'm only I'm only exporting into Nuke the new pixels uh, the new patch out of Photoshop I'm not including other stuff. So I guess let me show you here. This is a merge material. Um, and let's look at this guy from right there. This is my first patch, my second patch, and the corresponding cameras. This is a merge material. If I pop this in here, basically what I'm doing is I'm merging, uh, I'm, I'm laying the second projection on top of the first projection, and boom, there it goes right there. So. Um, that's how I start building it up and then if you go through and you take your third projection camera and you look at it through here ah so you start seeing this is where it's breaking again so you do the same thing that you did before render out this image with this right node render out with the same camera out of Maya the column for reference and then you patch this area so that it looks good um, and then you export out of Photoshop only that patch so what that third projection looks like is it looks like this <sighs> it looks like this right there and then this is my fourth projection so once again this is this right here on this side uh, is the full projection setup all complete so this is projection one projection 2, projection 3, and projection 4. And so all of those come together um, in, in this render. So now I have a complete, completely patched up um, column, uh, four different patches that, that, that make up this column render. So that's it for the tutorial. Um, if you take this video and go to my website gfryart.com, download the working files, you'll be able to I think figure out um, you know everything that has to do with this. It's, it's a pretty basic setup so I don't think you'll have a difficult time figuring out uh, things if you've got questions about it. Um, if you do have questions you can feel free to email me um, and uh, like I said, I'm going to be uh, posting, uh, this is one of several videos that I'll be posting on different matte painting techniques. So if you want to be notified of when those things are coming out, or I put a new article on my website, a tutorial, um, a new video, or a new gadget or tool or something that I'm using, um, you can get notified of those. Um, you can connect with me on Twitter, on Facebook. You can get an RSS feed out of the website. And you can uh, sign up for good old-fashioned email notifications. 
so you can connect with me in all those different ways. And uh, thanks.